So where would you, where would you like to go? Incidentals yeah. and insignificant things, that everything's not a test of fellowship, and that I can enjoy diversity. Uh, I can come to your place and celebrate what you do, even though I don't do it, mm -hmm. and go home and not preach against it. Mm -hmm. And I can <laughs> celebrate it, even though I may choose not to do it. Right. I think traditionalism is killing our fellowship. There's certainly nothing wrong with tradition, but traditionalism, I feel, is killing our fellowship. And so I'm hoping that the temperature goes down, the rancor, the contention, uh, the chicaneries, and the, uh, uh, all the argumentation. I'm hoping that uh, an atmosphere of fellowship, cornea, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. but I think it starts with the preachers. Uh, the members fight because we fight, right. and they argue because mm -hmm. we argue. And uh, I just gotten old enough now. I'm in my mid fifties that Bless you. everything ain't a problem for me. Uh, I'm just trying to preach my little old church <laughs> down there in Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> my folk happy with me and Amen. treat me well and respect me. I what you're doing at your house ain't my problem. Mm. Yeah, and right. so I think yeah, we sir. can get to that point where we'll not see ourselves as policemen, mm -hmm. but rather see ourselves as ushers mm -hmm. uh, to help each other, mm -hmm. uh, to find the right place. That's what mm -hmm. usher did. Helps people mm -hmm. to find the right place mm -hmm. and assist you to find the right place. Mm -hmm. uh, the usher don't never arrest nobody. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. But uh, <laughs> we, we got too many brothers that see themselves with Walk around with handcuffs and billy clubs. Mm. Oh, that's mm. And uh, arrest one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, mm. The constable. But no authority. Right, uh, right. Uh, uh, Bonnie fight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one bullet in the gun. Do you, do you feel like, do you feel like, I, I get the sense like everybody's just tired. Mm. I feel like I just, in our fellowship amongst preachers, it's like everybody just wants to go home and because the fellowship is too draining. Mm -hmm. So even though we're supposed to contend for the faith and unity, it's so exhausting that I just get this sense that everybody just wants to just go home, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and just say separate from one another. Yeah. I feel like that's holding over our fellowship. It is. So. Yeah. Let me, I just want to piggyback on what, what Leonard said. Um, being a PK, my father was 50 years old when I was born. He had already been preaching 20 years, 20 some years mm -hmm. when I was born. Um, there's a lot of preachers now today that's out here were at churches with uh, legendary preachers, but they did not <coughs> submit themselves to mm -hmm. the ministry of the in the tutelage of those preachers. My father had a hand <coughs> on me from the day I was born. We had training classes. But one of the greatest gifts, as, as Leonard said, about the, the problem is not in the pew. Mm -hmm. It's in the pulpit. Yeah. Uh, Chicago was known, the fellowship in Chicago among the preachers, they were truly called the Chicago Mafia. Quote, unquote, not because they were big and bad, mm -hmm. but because of the unity right. that they had. Mm -hmm. My father would take us as young boys to preacher meetings. Get over there and sit down, boy. He never told us why he was taking us. He never told us to pay attention and learn. Mm -hmm. But my mother told us after he died, his prayer was he asked God for four sons, to prepare them for the ministry and to give them back. Mm -hmm. So what he wanted us to see was the good, the bad, and the ugly, to see if the call of God was truly on us. So as Leonard said, I want to see our brotherhood uh, identify with the covenant relationship that the older preachers used to have. They would have knockdown meetings. But when they come out of that meeting, they were one. Mm -hmm. They were one. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. They never to, uh, tore each other down. Uh, they were not sheep herders. Uh, you could show up at my daddy's church one Sunday, and that's all right. You show up the next Sunday, what you doing over here? Mm -hmm. mm. That was the unity and the fellowship. So I agree with, with Pastor Linda here. If, if we can get back to being covenant brothers like we have here in Memphis mm -hmm. and Mississippi. Yeah. Um, Stop bragging. Well, I can't help it. I, I just can't help it. But it's the honest truth. I, I, I'm totally agreeing with Linda. If we, Doc, that's where the problem is. If I can respect what you do, as long as it's not against the word, right. Right. I may not do it. <clears throat> but as, as you said, if, if I love you in a covenant relationship and fix the pulpit, Doc, the pew will follow. Yeah. Let, me, let, me add, let me add on to what y'all you you already said. I believe I, I didn't grow up in the church, quote unquote. My mom and dad were not members of the church of Christ. So when I finally obeyed the gospel at a young age, uh, I could do pretty much, I could go to church or I didn't have to go to church. But I chose to go. Uh, but there was a time in the, in the Lord's church that although scripture was being thrown at me and I knew the scriptures, I really didn't have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I would like the brotherhood for, especially for our next generation, is not just instill in our our congregation to be scriptural, but spiritual. Mm -hmm. Because you could be scriptural and not spiritual. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason there's so much chaos in our brotherhood mm -hmm. is because we can quote book, chapter, and verse. Mm -hmm. We know the level of all, but we don't know the spirit behind it. Brother, Brother Miles made mention of the Bible says in Ephesians 4, mm -hmm. desiring to keep the unity. Right. Well, mm -hmm. in order to do that, the Bible tells us in lowliness of mind, right. Right. forbearing one another. <coughs> Lord, Lord have mercy. So you can't keep the unity of the spirit because there's so, <coughs> so much tension in the brotherhood where nobody wants to humble themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's what I would like to I would like to see us get to the point where we don't just try to master the, the text, but let the text master us. Yeah. For yeah. us to be what God is. Yes, yes. And that's a young person. That's a young person. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> very, very good. Wisdom. Wisdom. And, I, and I, 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 I do want to say that, that the Bible does say we then as ministers of God, mm -hmm. uh, the word minister means that you are an under roar. Right. Right. It has the idea of the slave ship and mm -hmm. you know people being under the ship rowing together. Uh, we can't row and get anywhere if we're, not if we're rowing Against in different right. different areas. So we have to learn how to dance to the master's music right. when he tells yeah. us to row. And so my back gonna hurt just like the next preacher's back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so as a preacher, we gotta learn how to stick by each other's side yeah. Yeah. and encourage yeah. sure each other. Because if the truth be told, we've all had some struggles. Oh, yeah. And we yeah. all need somebody Absolutely. to pick us up when we fall. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if Jesus can pick out Peter, Paul, and, and people like that who were really would be isolated in our brotherhood. <coughs> Jesus can use them. Yes, we certainly ought to be able to use Absolutely. each other. Sure so that's kind of where I believe. Sure. We're just servants of the master. Do what he asks us to do. We'll all be all right. Dear said, you know, we, we, we have to make sure that we, not, we don't just know the letter of the law, mm -hmm. but the spirit of the law. And, and I can only speak for me. My children... <laughs> What they heard in the pulpit, they saw in my life. And again, I'm not bragging. Any of my five children tell you that. Um, it, it has to be in you. They won't see it unless it's in you. Mm -hmm. See, and, and again, some things have to be caught, not taught. Mm -hmm. So, so even as, if, even as my brother Nicole Jordan, the late Nicole Jordan was my father in the gospel, a lot of things he did not teach me, but I caught it mm -hmm. by just being with being connected, being yeah. connected with them, right. and so one of the things I just started working out a few weeks ago. Yeah, you did. And uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and a trainer. We one night we was at the at the uh, training. We was exercising, and we started talking. He said, talking. He started talking about you know how you got to He said eighty percent of 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 what you're going to do is going to be out there. What you eat, your diet. Mm -hmm. He says you cannot come in here. And go back out after you came out in here, worked out, and go to McDonald's and Burger King. He said you can't outwork a bad diet. Mm -hmm. And I thought about that spiritually. That sometimes, if we're not careful, we'll teach our members to be 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 excited about worship and praise and thanksgiving. But yet, 
they'll leave out back out and they'll eat a bad diet. Exactly. diet. Yeah. They try to outwork it and it don't match. That's mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. So we have to be balanced in our teaching yeah. uh, to help help our congregations to grow. Yeah. Well, you can't have our rules without relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you're going to mentor young people and have people to mimic and parrot you, mm-hmm. uh, we're big on giving people rules, but you yes, can't sir. establish rules with Talk, anybody sir. without yes, a relationship. Talk, uh, if you establish a relationship, a proper relationship, with your own children or with your members, they accept the rules. Mm. But if you walk up to a man or woman, uh, and, and when you got the right relationship, relationship trump rules. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I yeah. know you're right. That's where grace comes in. Yeah. I know you're right. That's one of my get angry. One of my members is a policeman, and he stopped me one night. I was on. He's he behind me. I didn't know it was him, but I saw the light. He put me over. I was speeding. Uh oh. Uh oh. He got out of me when I was speeding. You know, in this climate, you get nervous. You get stuck. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he got to be pastor. Mercy. He's a pastor, man. You speed, man. But go on home to Sister Pam. Because I got a relationship. Yeah. Talk, so. The rules said write me a ticket. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Said, <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if you got the right relationship, it trumps rules. Yes, right, sir. Right, right, right. But you can't give people rules. Now, I've been stopped before. That's now, like the bitch. That's exactly what God did. Because I'm going to have a relationship with God, some of his rules, he let me get by. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I'm, I'm his child. You yes, preach, sir. Yeah, that's how you, you do it. Yeah. But it, I think what's happened to us is we've tried to go to these young preachers. And give them all these rules and regulations and tenets and oh, edicts and, and no relationship and yeah. no relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it just builds resentment. Yeah. 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 And that's, that, that's exactly right. I mean, you know, we, we all got to realize that that's why I was saying we got to learn how to be servants one of another. We belong to God and got to learn how to work together yeah. in the kingdom of God. Whether you do one thing a little differently, I mean, do it a little differently, but if it doesn't violate scripture, well, why am I barking at you? Uh, right. We are our own worst enemies. So we have to learn how to deal with things. And I learned something a long time ago, and, and you're right on target, uh, uh, that, that when I get a job in the corporate world, they'll give me a rule book, and they'll tell me what time to be at work, they'll tell me when my vacations are, mm-hmm. and all of that. But when you marry somebody, mm-hmm. when you're married to somebody, there's a difference between rule and love. Mm-hmm. So my point is, if we love each other, I'm going to let you slide with some stuff. Somebody who may even struggle in their ministry, what's, what's one piece of advice that you would give a minister or a young minister that could be able to bless him in his in his in his work. I have two real good ones, but I'll give one. I'm gonna follow your instructions. <laughs> follow your rule. <room. laughs> I know you love me, right? right, 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 right. So you wanna yeah, decide? <laughs> <laughs> one is one is honest, and this comes from my dad. It, it really comes from my mother and father. One is to remember that the church does not belong to you. Nick, I think what happens when we get to that point where you were talking about, mm-hmm. it becomes personal because now, you know, I got to defend me. I got to defend what I believe. Mm-hmm. I got to defend what I want to do. So, number one, remember that the church is not yours. It's right. God's. Right. He gave us the rule book. Right. Number two, remain humble. Mm-hmm. You remain humble. God is faithful. He will exalt you in due season. That's right. Those are the two major things I would tell a young preacher. Mm-hmm. You no, know, I, I <laughs> just, just kind of add on what he said. Uh, the same thing, being more uh, God-centered than self-centered. Uh, one of the things for me, nine years in your pastoral ministry, <coughs> uh, sometimes I, I did get discouraged, but I had to remind myself over and over again that I got to be God-centered and not self-centered. Because when I'm self-centered, uh, I start looking at me and what, what and sometimes God's timing is not my timing. Right, right. And while I'm looking at my watch, right. God say, "No, nah, you're not waiting on me. I'm waiting on you." Right. And so for me, it's for me to keep my keep focus. Make sure the church is not mine; it belongs to Him. Mm-hmm. I'm a mouthpiece of the church. And so that's that's what I would tell you. Yeah, I, I was, was something I learned from my parents a long time ago. Uh, don't be afraid of work. Churches grow based on your your relationship with God and how you're going to work in a congregation. In other words, what I'm trying to say is get to know the people that you're working with and y'all work with each other, not on each other. So I would tell a young preacher, know that church, know what they're used to, know their tradition, know their culture. And and when you know that, then you're able to work with people and they won't work on you as a minister. Yeah. If I was gonna give just one piece of saving advice, and there's a lot of sage wisdom yeah. in this room, is that there's a difference between preaching and pastoring. Oh, right. yes. Uh, oh, yes. 
what we concentrate on more is preaching to people. Lord mm -hmm. have mercy. But you gain their favor when you pass through. That's right. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Uh, they can get good preaching on TV. Surely. Yes. Uh, <laughs> they, they don't remember you your, your sermon. Uh -huh. They remember when you meet them in the, in the crisis. That's right. Yeah. You were there when Big Mama died. Mm -hmm. Or when Pookie was in jail. Mm -hmm. right? Or when they had surgery. You went and prayed for them. That's what they remember. Right. We concentrate, and don't get me wrong, we all know we need to know the word and preach sure, the word. Sure. But what people love you, adore you for, and are close to you about is how you pastor them, right. and not how you preach them. Right. Yeah. That's what I would tell That's you. That's good. That's a good word. I would say regardless of what, uh, where you are or where you're located, every church goes through the season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every church has a winter. Every church has a fall. Every church has mm -hmm. a spring. Mm -hmm. Every church has a summer. And so I think if you can learn how to weather the seasons mm -mm. and enjoy the seasons. And I think sometimes you experience a really good point in your ministry, but a winter is coming. And I don't care how hard you try to fight it, it's a, a winter is coming. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn when to get your coat out. Mm -hmm. you, can't, right. you can't stop the winter, yeah. but it doesn't have to be that cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't stop the summer. But it doesn't have to be that hot. Get some ice cream. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think every 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 ministry goes through seasons right. where the attendance is really, really good in this season. And then you go through another season and nobody calls you. People are absent. Whole rows are missing. Uh, and you just go through, you know, you go through that time. So I just think, uh, I think it's beneficial to understand. Uh, I'm upset now. Oh,